or what? Weak. Are y'all ready to go tonight? Okay, okay. All right, we're not quite there yet, but we will be, I promise, right? Listen, those of you guys that don't know, I am Kyle. I am the campus director around this place, and I, let me tell you something. Dang, I'm going to cry. I already cried already. I mean, I cry a lot, so just get used to it. Sorry. Right? That's just when the Holy Spirit gets moving, that's how it expresses in my life, so I don't really, I'm not really sorry. I just say it just because I'm uncomfortable in this moment because I cry, and I'm a grown man. But, like I said, I'm Kyle, I'm the campus director, and I am telling you, I'm just so proud of y'all for being here. And I'm that guy that will make awkward eye contact until I receive it back. I was a teacher for 15 years, so I just know that eventually you will cave in. And I will sit here for about 30 minutes until you do, so I'm just going to make sure I get everybody's eyes before we get started. Because I believe, and trust me, not through me. Not because of my brain or ability or understanding, but I believe that there's something for you tonight. And I believe some of you already experienced it. And trust me, this, this isn't like a, you know, a, a, a concert. I've been on my knees for you. I've been crying for days for you. If you don't have a sense of urgency, I do. And it's my job to communicate that tonight. If you don't have an understanding of who you are, oh, I do. And I shared this with the group earlier before I walked out. I, I, honest, truthfully, my heart's prayer is, is God, I, I, don't let me just see a room full of, full, of, full of young people. Let me see what you see. Mm. dang it, and it just gets me every time. Because I don't think some of y'all see it. Some of you, I'm so proud of you for just getting out of bed and, and getting dressed and taking a step forward for what you look in the mirror and see. It's hard. Leave it here. Hopefully you already did, but if you didn't, you still have an opportunity tonight to leave it here. Leave it here. You are valuable. You are beautiful. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are created with a purpose in God's image, divinely made, knit together in your mother's womb. Someone knew you before you knew yourself. Someone knew what your breath would sound like. Every hair on your head, the most intimate detail, the most, the stuff you think you hide from everybody. There's someone up looking at that stuff saying, that's what I made. There was no mistake. And I'm going off script here, but I, I, I like, I just, you need to get this. The clock is ticking. And you don't have to wake up feeling tomorrow the way you felt today. My beautiful little sisters in this place, put your hand over your heart right now. Come on. Physical action. Put your hand over your heart. Do you feel that empty space? Everybody, everybody, put your hand over your heart. Do you feel that space? It's not an empty space, right? There's a heart in there, right? That is sacred. You fight for that space. Everybody's eyes, please, especially my beautiful little sisters, you fight for that space. Not everybody gets a key to that space. Not everybody gets access to that. Not everybody gets to control those emotions, not everybody gets to determine your value or your worth. I don't care how cute they are. I don't care what they look like. I don't care what car they drive. I don't care what they say to you. You fight for that space. You keep that space between you and God until someone deserving comes along that has proven, proven before he has access to that space that he knows what to do with it, that he knows to guard it, that he knows to fight for it the same way God would, that he knows that you were fearfully and wonderfully made, that he knows you were created in the image of God, that you are beautiful and that you are worthy and that you have an ability to change his world with just a blink of your eye. 
Until that love is there, fight for that space. Life's too short. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's time. It's time to step up. It's time to understand what you have an ability to do because this generation, y'all, I am, it's urgent. It's just like, my heart is just, I wish you could hear it. You can't, that would be cool, but I wish you could hear it, guys. You guys have an opportunity that's so pretty. It's such a, it's so like, only God. Look at the past two years. Look at this world just swirling around us. Chaos, confusion, identity, left and right. People don't know. We don't know what's going on. But your generation, are you with me? Wake up. Your generation has an opportunity to recognize the world you're living in and to recognize that you are called to be a light to this world, that there's plenty of darkness, that it's time, it's time to be set apart, right? It's easy to be set apart tonight. It's easy to be set apart tomorrow because if you walk with love, if you walk with truth bubbling in your belly, not my truth, the truth of the word, that's all you have to do to be set apart. Don't overcomplicate it. There is such a beautiful explosion of of, of the love of Jesus right on the other side of you guys waking up and stepping into your identity. There is such an outpouring of the love of Jesus, right? When the dark gets darker, what are we called to do? Stand up because we will get brighter. And don't worry about to your left and to your right. In a pitch dark room, won't one candle make some light? That's enough. That's all he needs. Because guess what? If you don't, God doesn't need us. If we stay silent, the rocks will cry out. Are you you with me? But he wants to use you. He wants to use your gifts. He wants, to, he wants for you to just wake up and say, God, let's go today. Your will, not my will, to step into the path that he's already gone before you. He's already laid out your steps. He's already seen it. He's there waiting for you just to step boldly into what he has for you. Man, I see just greatness. Life. Life more abundantly, beauty, strength, gifts, talent, anointing. I see such a beautiful expression of the love of Jesus. I see a, 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 a God, only, only God, only God could put together this mosaic that I'm looking at. Only God. You're not here on accident. So don't sit in that chair like you have no worth or purpose. And we're actually going to get to some of these notes today. I'm sorry. Y'all bring it out of me. Some of these, some of my family on staff, they're like, uh-oh, Kyle's got the mic tonight at the U. Watch out. And honestly, this is just where I take, I take you guys very seriously because this is where I struggled. I had my prodigal son years about your age. Take it from me. Let, let me walk through some pain and broken relationships and, 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 and tears and, and worthlessness and suicidal thoughts. And let me take down that path and, and you know, so, so that I can run back to you before you set down the same path and warn you for what's coming. Because it's coming. Right? Let me shine some light on your path so that you can say, oh, oh thank you, Kyle. So you can just whoop, sidestep that, that hurdle. Whoop sidestep that obstacle. Are you with me? Can I do that tonight really quick? Because we're already running out of time. Tonight's real message (laughs) was for that we need to pray proactively. And I'm just going to speed through this because I still believe that there's something that God wants to do, especially through these verses. And we're going to start with Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. And if you don't listen to anything else, listen to this. Do not be anxious about anything pretty easy to find anxiety in 2022. 
Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Pray. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Pray proactively. Why? Because when you get in the mess, it's hard to see clear enough to remember what you need to pray. So we start laying a foundation of prayer tonight because we know God never promised that this path was going to be easy, right? The promise of God is not that, hey, everything's good. Just chill, eat some pancakes, peace out. Everything's right. That's not what this is about. But we are given an opportunity to be in the presence of God like we are tonight to let the word of God resonate in our hearts. If you've never heard it for yourself, let me preach some to you. If you've never deposited something in your heart, let me deposit it for you. Because the truth is we have to pray proactively. We have to have things in our toolbox and on our tool belt so that when life deals its hand like it is pretty clearly the past two years, what comes out? If your heart gets squeezed, what comes out? Some of you just real talk, it is fear, anxiety, frustration, right? And just real talk, I get it. Me too. It's tough. But that's why we have community. That's why we have the word of God. Because even when I get anxious or get frustrated, I can remember those scriptures that I had deposited before. Those conversations that I had prayed with God, you you know, years and years before. So that in a certain moment, he threw the Holy Spirit, he can just pluck that specific verse out of my brain for me because he will if you put it in he'll pull it out when you need it and then that'll be what you need just to take that step forward oh man that step oh the devil hates this right here you know what the devil hates this Mm. Mm. I believe there is such an orchestra in heaven there are angels right now waiting for some of y'all just to Mm, and, then, and in heaven, this is just going to be a concert, a beautiful expression of the love of Jesus being worshipped in heaven just because some of y'all have been doing this. Tonight, can we just, oh, the, that, that, that drum beat in heaven. That drum beat in heaven. Every time you take a step, the angels, those grandstands just celebrating you, making progress, stepping into your identity, stepping into your purpose, saying, saying no, 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 no. No, no boy defines my worth. I know my worth. It's found in Christ Jesus. No boy has to tell me I'm beautiful because when I wake up, I say, God, let your will be done. You made me beautiful. I know what I'm doing because you're helping me. Are you with me? Okay, okay. If not, you will be. Point number one, pray proactively. And we go to Mark eleven twenty two 22 through 24. Then Jesus said to the disciples, have faith in God. I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea. And it will happen, but you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. Verse 24, I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. How many of you guys even knew that before you came tonight? How many of you guys knew you can pray for stuff? All right, well, now you do. And there's different kind of prayers. You heard me reference one of them. There's like prayers of dedication and, you know, uh, sanctification. And, you know, there's prayers like that where you just wake up every day before you eat your Captain Crunch. You say, God, let your will, not my will be done. Because you know what that does? That doesn't just, those aren't just words you articulate. Those are, that's a, like a, a perspective. That's a, that's a direction you set your day in every single day. You pray that every day, right? There's every day and then there's every day. You pray that every day. Are you with me? God, let your will, not my will be done. God, Kyle Bradley Cox, his, his brain is futile. What he knows is, is limited, but you have me in the palm of your hand. Your will be done. Pray that every day, every day. If you haven't, start. If you didn't today, try tomorrow. I promise it'll change your perspective for the day. Man, I tell you, you can pray for anything. Because here's what's really cool. 
we have that, that prayer of dedication. But here's, here's what's really amazing. Through, through Christ Jesus, you know what we never have to pray when we're, when we're looking at healing, when we're looking at fear, when we're looking at anxiety? You know what we never have to say? Lord, let your will be done. Do you want to know why? Because it is written. It was set in stone that moment Jesus took all of fear, death, frustration, anxiety, lack, ugliness. He took all that with him to the cross. His will was done. His will is done. His will will always be done when it comes to healing. You can claim healing in your life. You can take authority over that anxiety. You can take authority over that frustration. Yeah, some of y'all need to pray, Lord, let your will be done when it comes to your job. Quit job hopping and say, you know what, God, if I'm supposed to be in this job, I'm going to stay in the job. Your will be done. Are you with me? But not, what you're look, not when you're looking at your anxiety. There's only one place that goes. That goes beneath your feet. Because you didn't deserve it, but you were given authority through the blood that was shed through Jesus to be able to take dominion, take authority, take understanding. Oh, the enemy hates that because you know what he has to do? Exactly what you're doing from 2020 and 2021. Like, okay, I, I, enough, enough. I can't take anymore, God. I can't take anymore. Well, we can change that position in an instant when we recognize the authority that we've been given through Jesus to look at those situations in our life, to step up with boldness, to pray bold prayers, to step up with the authority that we've been given and exercise that authority. You have the keys. You have everything you need. You are smart enough. You are holy enough. You are here. Man, don't just undersell the fact that you're here. You woke up, and you're of this age that everybody says, oh, man, all you guys do is drink and party and all that stuff. That's all. Okay, but you're here. You might have done that yesterday, but you don't have to do it tomorrow. Sorry. You might have given someone the keys to your heart yesterday, but you don't have to give it to them tomorrow. Not until they deserve it. I guess we better go to point three, Devin. Point three. <laughs> point two, actually, I'm sorry. Can we pray the word and not the problem, please? Come on now. I've already described where those problems sit. They're under your feet. But if you don't have the words, if you don't have the word in your heart that you can apply to whatever situation you're going through, that's why it has victory over you. But when you understand that you have everything and you need, how many of you don't even know where your Bible is? Knock the dust off that thing. Get the cobwebs off of it. Get that old bowl of milk sitting on it, on your dresser, whatever. You got your toothbrush on it. It's like a hat rack. It's got whatever. I don't know what's on it, but clean that thing off. Open it up and let it reveal what it needs to in your life. Start depositing what it needs to in your heart so that whatever situation rises up, then you have exactly what you need to throw in the enemy's face. Don't let Kyle determine your value either. But the Bible needs to. And here's what's super cool. When you, get something to, when you get something tomorrow, the next day it's got something brand new. His grace and mercy is fresh every morning. It's like the woman at the well, she thought she was just drinking water. She thought she was there just a, an energy drink like, y'all, mm, this is good, Jesus. But what did she partake of? Life-giving water that will bubble up for the rest of her life. 
that all those guys that thought they just they showed her exactly where she stood. They they were pretty clear with what her value was and what her purpose that she thought was on this earth. But from that moment where she left that well, there was an overflowing of abundance of wealth and value and purpose that no man could have given her, that only our Heavenly Father could have given her. And guess what? When she went back into town and said, hold on, y'all, hold on, y'all. The king of kings is is here. The Lord of lords is here. Come on. Come on. The king of kings is here. And people looked at her and still saw a a prostitute. But guess what? They came running. They came running to their purpose. They came running to their calling. God used her. Ooh, God used her to change the trajectory of some people's lives in that city, in that town. She was pretty valuable then. Some people owe her her, their life. Some people owe her their salvation. I don't care what you thought you were worth yesterday. If you step into God's purpose, oh, man, oh, man, one moment with the king can change things around. She went from, uh, uh, you know what, to a prophet real quick. Did she not? Okay, 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 all right, we're getting there. Kalista, we almost got everybody. We're about 75% now, okay? Point three, and then we're going to wrap this up. There is power in your prayers. I don't know if some of you knew that before you came, but let this just resonate. Acts 4, Acts 4, 23 through 31. From quick context, you know, this is literally when the, the foundation of the church was being built. Okay, you know, you know, you know, literal disciples of Jesus, people that walked with Jesus here now, like getting to work. Okay, they got the commission, let's go. Come on. Mm-hmm. That's them built. These are like building blocks. I'm not, yeah, I'm not very artistic, sorry. They're building the foundation of the church, literally, as we know. We are standing on the shoulders of some of these moments. Are you with me? Okay, but in this moment, we have Peter and John. Who were, who were in a place, literally miracles were happening. Someone got healed. But in this moment, some Sadducees, all these religious type that, that are, you know, not cool with them professing the name of Jesus for, for preaching the gospel. They say, hold on, whoa, 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 whoa. Come on now. Come on now. We're the law. We're religion. You better take that stuff somewhere else. If you come back here, we're going to throw you in jail. Or worse, we'd kill you right now if you didn't just heal somebody and people like the fervors all raised up in this moment. And so they're like, man, we can't kill them now. We can't throw them in jail now. People will revolt, right? Okay, are you with me? Some context, let's read. Verse 23. As soon as they were freed, Peter and John returned to the other believers and told them what the leading priests and elders had said. When they heard the report, all the believers lifted their voices together in prayer to God. O sovereign Lord, creator of heaven and earth, the sea, and everything in them. So this is a prayer modeled for us that is going to be pretty bold. Are you with me? Do you understand what we're doing here? Here is a prayer modeled. So next time you need a bold prayer, well, here you go. Throw this one in your toolbox. Throw this one in your tool belt right here. You got that good hammer spot. It's going to sit right in that sweet spot for when you need it, okay? When they heard the report, all the believers lifted their voices together in prayer to God. Here we are. O sovereign Lord, creator of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them, you spoke long ago by the Holy Spirit through our ancestor David, your servant, saying, why were the nations so angry? Anybody relate to an angry nation? It's almost like God knew what he was doing and he placed words in this book called the Bible so that we could use them in a time thousands of years later because his word still is true, because his word does not return void, because even though he spoke it back then, it still carries significance in 2022. It's still something that you can put in your heart for 2022. Are are we reading the same book? Are you with me, family? Okay, just making sure, just making sure. Told you we'll get them. Why were the nations so angry? Why did they waste their time with futile plans? The kings of the earth prepared for battle. The rulers gathered together against the Lord and against his Messiah. In fact, this has happened here in this very city. For Herod, you know, the king, Pontius Pilate, the governor, the Gentiles and the people of Israel were all united against Jesus. Crucify him. 
crucify him. Your holy servant whom you anointed, but everything they did was determined beforehand according to your will. And now, O Lord, hear their threats and give us your servants great boldness in preaching your word. Little did they know that even the conviction of Jesus, little did they know that every time that they crucify him echoed out, it was just fulfilling the will of God that he determined so long before, before they were even born, they didn't even know that stepping into this moment, dragging Jesus to the cross, every whip, every time they cursed his name, they were fulfilling the divine word of God. They were giving God more strength. They were speaking his will in that moment. And the only one that knew it was Jesus. Ooh, ooh, man, come on, don't miss out on this moment in the presence of God, my family. Please, come on. Come on, step in. God's best is right on the other side. God's best is right on the other side of that pride. God's best is right on the other side of you thinking you're too cool. God's best is right on the other side of you trying to impress somebody, not really getting too into it because they aren't into it. And your word, if you get into it, then they're going to judge you for being into it. And then you're going to have to lose some friends. And then you think, or you're going to have to lose a, someone that you thought was cute before you came. And you, you're only here to get some digits. Don't miss out on what God has for you. And now, O oh Lord, hear their threats and give us your servants great boldness in preaching your word. Stretch out your hand with healing power. May miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Ooh. Don't miss out. This is the best part. Verse 31. After this prayer, the meeting place shook. Oh, I, and, and this is just me. I was an English teacher, you know, so I, I, I dig metaphors, and, and I don't know why, but when I read this, I, I have like a, not a morbid perspective, but I have like the perspective of, of heaven, right? I imagine looking down on this moment that that went, that when that room shook, oh, I, I, just think about what was going on in heaven. The perfect will of God being played out. Here on earth, oh man, heaven celebrated that in that moment. After this prayer, after them realizing that they have a boldness, that they have an authority, that they are now exercising a power and they stepped into an identity, that they realized their purpose, that they stepped into a moment where they knew what God had for them, the meeting place shook. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the word of God with boldness. This isn't make-believe. Tonight, real talk, tonight, if some of you guys just recognize your potential, if some of you guys recognize the ability that you have to impact the world around you, if some of you guys realize that the darkness you're stepping in is only so that you can shine brighter, if some of you realize that darkness that's been clouding your mind and in between your ears and you remember that this is not a battle of flesh and blood. That the real estate you need to be fighting for is right here and right here. And if you just win one battle, you can win two. And if you win two, you can win three. Don't try to win them all. But if some of you guys step into an understanding of the potential that you have, we could shake this room right here tonight in Canton, Ohio, right here on earth, not because we deserve the opportunity, but because of what Jesus did for us. Can we shake the room tonight? Can we shake this place up a little bit? Can we shake our own lives so that we can be contagious? And, and next thing you know, revival's breaking out. The world has dealt their hand. The world has played everything. That's it. The enemy's given all he's got. He thinks he's winning. It kind of looks like he's winning. Because guess what? He does have dominion here on this earth. But you want to know what he even knows? 
Guess what the devil knows? <laughs> he knows who wins. What's his only hope? To send roadblocks, to cause you to stumble, to cause you to keep your eyes down here instead of up on the King of kings and Lord of lords who has given you a divine purpose. To focus on the things of this world and make it seem like that's everything that there is. He's nothing but a liar. He knows what authority you can wield if you keep that name in your tongue. He knows the authority you can wield if you keep your nose in this book that used to be a hat rack or a cereal bowl, whatever, table. He knows. Why do you think he's coming so hot these past two years? Because the more of you guys he can confuse, the more of you guys that he can get just to take your own life, the more of you, the more of you guys that he can get to stumble, that's his plan. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you, let, let me tell y'all, y'all something. Come on now. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something tonight. Do not leave this place without hearing me tonight. After this prayer, by them stepping in to God's purpose with a bold prayer, by them stepping into God's anointing, understanding that they can pray bold prayers, what happened? The meeting place shook and they all were filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the word of God with boldness. Can we stand in this place? Because this is what we need. This is what we need to do. This is what we need to understand. This is the calling we need to step into. Every single one of you, like a beautiful mosaic is an individual piece to the God created puzzle. Every single one of you has a unique understanding of who God is to you so that you can go and tell someone else who doesn't know him. Every single one of you is beautiful. Every single one of you is perfect. Every single one of you is exactly the way God created you, but you have to step into it, y'all. And when you stink and you think you suck, you need to wake up and say, shake it off, enemy. Yeah, you got yesterday, but not tomorrow. Yeah, you know what? I get it. I was lost last week, but not this week. proud of you. I'm so proud of you guys. You're doing it. You're doing it. You're exactly where you should be. Mm. Let it be a revelation to you today. You're doing it. You're doing better than you think you are. You're doing better than you think you are. You're doing better than you think you are. Don't let that enemy trip you up. Don't let those lies determine your next step. You're doing better than you think you are. Those words your parents yelled at you are not, that's not true. 
Sometimes you have to guard your heart to your family. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry that that's you. I'm so sorry that that's you. That's tough, y'all. People that are supposed to treat your heart with the tender and love and the care that Jesus would. I'm sorry that those same people would defile your heart. I'm so sad that those same people would break your heart. Run to him. Leave it there. Run to him and leave it there. Come on. Run to him and leave it there. I know it's not fair. I know it's not right. I know it doesn't make you feel loved or beautiful and you just think, Kyle, you're making all this stuff up my whole life. I, I, I've heard nothing. I've heard the opposite. I know. And I'm sorry. If you've never heard that before, I'm sorry. I'm proud of you. But you can't let it sink in. You can't let it set in. And if you do, you have to take it out. Sometimes, sometimes we have to pry it out and leave it at the feet of Jesus, but it's important. It's essential. And all this is building to this moment, guys. All this is just talk to talk, whatever, if, if, if you don't know Jesus. All of this is just whatever, if you don't know, we are going to spend eternity. Because I have good news. You can know. You can know. You're saying, Kyle, what? You say, what? Yeah, you can know. I try not to sugarcoat because, again, this is where I fell. I was the prodigal son. Like I said, I was a hot mess in, in my 20s. So let me bring some good news. That, yeah, there's a heaven. Yeah, there's a hell. But you can know where you sit. And the devil can't take that away. He can shroud it and cloud it and, and get you looking, you know, putting your eyes on other things. But he, your salvation is between you and the blood of Jesus. So with every eye bowed, every eye, wait, what? Every eye closed, every head bowed right now in this place. We're all going to say this prayer together, but if you, if you need to mean it, if you need to, to correct, if you need to just refocus, or maybe this is the first time anybody's even said this kind of stuff to you, and you're like, Kyle, you're crazy, but if this is true, I want it. If you've never prayed this prayer before, or you're just correcting, if you're just getting your feet back on the path, whatever the situation is, we're all going to pray this together, but I just want you to mean it. Believe it. Confess it. And we're all going to repeat this after me together. Say, Dear Heavenly Father. Say, Dear Heavenly Father. Come on, say, Dear Heavenly Father. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die for me. I know I'm a sinner that needs a Savior. Thank you that I'm a new creation in Christ. And tomorrow I will wake up knowing that I have a place and a purpose. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And with every eye closed still, if you prayed that prayer and if it just hit different, if you prayed that prayer and you just know something was different tonight, you're not going to wake up tomorrow wondering where you're going to spend eternity. If you know you just, you know, you didn't know before you came in, but you know tomorrow you're going to wake up having an identity and you know we're going to spend eternity. Don't, don't leave. I'm just going to ask you for one more step of boldness because I believe things are just shackles are going to fall off you when you just follow through with this. I believe strongholds are going to hit the ground and be placed where they need to be when you follow through with just simple expression. So if you prayed that prayer and just meant it different, raise your hand right now in this place. Raise your hand. Come on. Don't miss out. Tomorrow is not promised. Today is the day of salvation. Y'all, heaven is celebrating. Angels, there's a beautiful chorus just for you. 
and just for you and just for you. Keep those hands up. Come on. Put them up loud and proud. Let the devil see that hand. Let the devil cower in fear because of that expression. Let the devil be placed in his rightful place with that expression. Come on. Thank you. Thank you. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. You guys can open your eyes. Let me tell you something. Man, I got something out of this tonight. Y'all are special. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm telling you, your generation, something different is stirring. There's a fresh anointing if you just step into the river. There's something so beautiful. I, I mean, I, I like, I feel like I get glimpses of it. And I can barely contain it. Oh, man, you guys are special. There's something unique about your generation. But the point is you have to wake up and experience it and step into it or else it'll just pass you by because the, the Bible has, has predicted it. None of this is a surprise to God. But I promise you, if you just jump in the river and let him just steer you, oh my gosh, there's something so beautiful for you. You feel me? Yeah? We good? We cool? I need to go to sleep, y'all. I'm up way past my bedtime. Hey, some hosts are about to be up. Thank you guys so much for giving me a space, giving me a moment. Appreciate y'all. Love you. We'll see you next time. Well, hey, thank you so much. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, that's incredible. We believe that's the most important decision you're ever gonna make. So the Bible says when one person turns to God, all of heaven rejoices. So I believe they are throwing a party tonight. But do us a favor, text the word the you, that's one word, to the number 94,000. And we'd love to connect with you and help you on this journey of faith. And also if you're tuned in tonight for the very first time, thank you so much. Thank you so much for giving up part of your day just to hang out with us. So just say thank you. We'd love to get a free Starbucks gift card in your hand just for tuning in. So text again the word the you, that's one word, to the number 94,000. And we'd love to get that free gift into your hands just for hanging out with us. And also just a reminder that we'll be meeting live every single Wednesday night at 9.30 here in the building at the U. And also we'll be posting our videos online Thursdays at seven o'clock, just in case maybe you can't make it out for health concerns or you're still uneasy about things. We wanna keep you connected and keep you plugged in. So we love you guys. You guys have been incredible tonight and we'll see you next week.